Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadi and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are talking about color grading, specifically DaVinci Resolve versus Lumetri Color. Which one's better? We're going to find out. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ian, DaVinci Resolve clearly superior when it comes to color grading. And while I mostly agree, I don't want you to formulate an opinion just yet, because as I was going through all the pros and cons of each, there's some pretty good stuff on either side. Now, just a warning, this is not going to be your traditional Learn How to Edit Stuff tutorial. I'm going to go through the pros and cons of each program as it relates to color grading. I'm not necessarily going to teach you how to color grade, but there will be little nuggets of gold hidden inside this video. But if you want to learn more about color grading in both DaVinci Resolve and Lumetri Color, there are links in the video description below to previous videos that I have done on both programs. One's a program, one's a plugin on both things. And another little asterisk on this video, I kind of just threw all of my thoughts into a Google Doc in no particular order. So this video is going to be a pros and cons video in no particular order for both DaVinci Resolve and Lumetri Color inside of Adobe Premiere. So just sit back, relax. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to do all the explaining. You're going to do all the watching and you're also going to do all the thumbs upping and the subscribing. If you haven't done that yet, we are getting started. DaVinci Resolve versus Lumetri Color. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we're starting off with the pros and we're starting off in DaVinci Resolve. The first pro, DaVinci Resolve, in no particular order, is auto grade is God tier. If you want to auto grade your footage, you have some clips in DaVinci Resolve, come right down here to the bottom left hand corner, click on this little A right down here, boom, auto grade. And it looks really, really nice. And if you want to take it one step further, the little eyedropper right next to it, you can click on that and then click on something white in your scene and it will auto white balance your shot as well. If I were to take that eyedropper, click on the green leaf of this plant, uh, you see that everything goes blue because that's not white. Eyedropper, white. And I have a really, really good looking shot. Here's the before, here's the after, and it looks amazing. If we were to go over to Premiere and do the exact same thing on the exact same shot, and I click on the auto grade in Premiere, which is right here, d <sighs> God, it's awful. It looks terrible. By the way, I am using S-Log footage, which is a very flat color profile. If you guys want to download these clips and color grade yourself, mess around with some stuff yourself, link in the video description below to download these clips. It's just stuff shot around my living room. I got shot of my dog. Check this out. It's very cute. Sleeping in the sun. If you want to download that clip, go for it. Let's move on to the second pro of DaVinci Resolve, which is more range on adjustments than Lumetri Color. So for example, if I were to take this clip of my dog Goji and come down here and boost the contrast, I can just keep going on this contrast until basically it becomes deep fried at the end. Uh, and that's obviously I would never do that with my contrast, but I have a lot of range here, negative range and positive range. If I were to go to the same shot in Lumetri Color, I can only crank the contrast to 100. I actually can't go past 100. Oh, but wait, yes, you can. Am I giving a point? to Lumetri Color, I don't know, check this out. I can hold down Control and then I can boost this contrast past 100, but it is actually capped at 150. So if you are shooting in a flat color profile like we are, I actually need more contrast than this. I, 100 is not enough. So I could go to 150, but even 150 is not enough. So one pro of DaVinci Resolve is that I can really boost this contrast uh, almost to the point where it's destroying the footage, but having that much room to play with is actually like a really nice pro. Number three pro of DaVinci Resolve, masking and mask tracking is far superior than anything inside of Adobe Premiere or Lumetri Color. I could just quickly come over here, come to my pen tool, and I can start masking out around my dog Goji. Oh my God, he's so cute, I can't get over it. But anyway, I've just drawn a really nice mask. I can come down here and feather it. I'm obviously going fast for this tutorial, but I can do a lot with this mask. I could track the mask in my scene by coming over to the mask tracker and clicking track forward, and you can see how many track points there are. This was shot on a tripod, so it's actually not tracking, but the fact that I can track a mask inside of DaVinci Resolve is amazing, and it's a lot easier to work with than any of the masks inside of Adobe Premiere. And I say Premiere because Lumetri relies on Premiere's masking technology in order to do masks. If you were to do masks, which I don't recommend doing because the masking inside of Adobe Premiere is kind of garbage. So pro number three of DaVinci Resolve masking and mask tracking far superior to anything else I've ever seen ever. Maybe not After Effects. After Effects is still pretty god tier, but color grading only, DaVinci Resolve wins that out, hands down. Pro number four of DaVinci Resolve when it comes to color grading is multiple levels of detail. So down here, I have all of my primary color adjustments right down here, and I can adjust the mids, I can adjust the highs, and I can do all this stuff down here looking really nice. But then if I come over to this third dot right here under my color wheels, I can adjust the logarithmic shadows, midtones, and highlights. And basically what that means is I'm isolating just the blacks. You can see here on these little mirrors on my wall. I'm isolating just the blacks and really making those mirrors super dark, but nothing else in the scene is getting that dark. 
and that is the logarithmic color adjustment versus the primaries. If I were to reset this, come back over here to the primaries, you see that everything is getting uniformly dark instead of just the dark parts of my scene, which is what the logarithmic adjustment does. And that is just something that Lumetri Color doesn't have. It doesn't have the level of detail that DaVinci Resolve has. And that's what makes DaVinci Resolve really, really powerful because the levels of detail are insane. Also, while we're here, you see that every single adjustment has an RGB value associated to it. Everything you can kind of segment into RGB, which gives you even more detail than Lumetri Color. You basically have control over every aspect of your footage. The level of detail is pretty astonishing, and that is a pro for DaVinci Resolve. Fifth pro for DaVinci Resolve, the interface, as clunky and complicated as it looks, is actually fairly intuitive. If I wanna zoom in on my footage, I can just use my scroll wheel, and then to move around my frame, I can click my middle mouse button and move around my frame. I can't do this kind of stuff easily in Premiere, and I'm gonna say Premiere instead of Lumetri Color, because again, Lumetri Color relies on the bones of Premiere to do this kind of stuff. I actually have to come in here and I have to zoom in on my shot down here and then I have to use these little things. I can't get around easily. It's not easy to navigate to little details inside of Premiere. Uh, and that's kind of a bummer, but with DaVinci Resolve, the interface is actually very intuitive and everything, even though it looks complicated, is nice and easy to use. So to me, that is a pro of DaVinci Resolve. And the sixth pro of DaVinci Resolve is a node-based workflow. So if you guys know anything about DaVinci Resolve, you know that it works based on nodes. So for example, on this node, I wanted to give it some saturation and I want to boost the highlights, then I'm going to add a node, and then maybe I want to darken it a little bit, darken the shadows, maybe give it some contrast. And then on another node, I'm going to like completely mess with the color and make this whatever. This looks beautiful. Look at that. It is working based on nodes. And so with this, each adjustment is contained on its own node and you can bypass nodes to kind of see what things are doing, where things are going wrong. And it just gives you a lot more control versus something in Lumetri Color. It doesn't work based off nodes. It's basically a plugin. You have to use the plugin Lumetri Color to do all of your dirty work for you. And so you don't actually have as much control. So when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, the node-based workflow is a huge, huge pro in my book. And again, we're not gonna get into the weeds on nodes today, but you can come in and you can add all these different kinds of nodes, corrector, parallel layer, key, splitter, combiner, and all of these do very different things. And that is what makes this program so powerful because combining all of these nodes together, you can really get some beautiful results. So node-based workflow, hell yeah, pro from me. The seventh pro of DaVinci Resolve is doing selective color adjustments on your footage. It works really, really well. So check this out. I'm gonna make a new node. I'm gonna come up here to my eyedropper, grab the green, shift H to highlight. And now I'm just gonna mess with these settings a little bit and I'm going to grab all the green in my plants just like so and now I can adjust the color of those leaves and kind of make them whatever I want and it works a lot better and it's a lot cleaner than anything that I've seen unfortunately in Lumetri Color and it becomes even more powerful because you can mask around this you see that the leaves over here are getting changed there's maybe some stuff over here that's getting changed because it's green I can just come in here and grab a mask and just mask out the part of the plant that I actually want to change just like this, and now everything else goes back to being green. And so combined with masking inside of DaVinci Resolve, the selective color management, albeit I did it fairly messy, works really, really well, way better than anything I've seen in Lumetri Color. So if you guys are trying to stylize your footage or do anything very interesting with selective color, DaVinci Resolve is going to be your hero. Trust me. The eighth pro of DaVinci Resolve is the ability to grab stills of a grade that you've done and then utilize it for other clips that are on your timeline simply by right clicking, going to grab still. It will generate a LUT over here on this side. Now I can just go to a shot down here on my timeline and literally just drag and drop onto that. And if I need to make any additional adjustments from there, I can, but I can grab a LUT based on something else that I've already done and then copy and paste it to my heart's content down here using this still. And on top of that, I can take this still and I can put it up in the gallery, which will allow me to then call up that LUT at any point just by hitting control one on the keyboard, one, two, three, four, five. You can do control all these letters and you can apply those LUTs to various different parts of your footage just simply by hitting control one on your keyboard. So that functionality is really, really awesome. And again, what makes DaVinci Resolve so powerful when it comes to color grading. 
Pro number nine of DaVinci Resolve is saving out LUTs that you can use in other programs. So you've got a grade that looks really nice. You can just right click on that still image down here and go to generate 3D LUT, either a 33 point cube or a 65 point cube. Click on that and then you can save it out as a file, export it, and then even bring it into Premiere and use it in Lumetri Color if you want. But there are some limitations. If you do any selective color management or any like masking or anything like that, it actually won't transfer over. So if you're gonna transfer a LUT from DaVinci to Premiere and use it inside of Lumetri, you have to keep it relatively simple. So basic adjustments, contrast saturation, highs, mids, lows, that kind of stuff. Any masking or any um, selective color effects won't transfer over. So just be careful on that. But it's pretty cool. You can transfer LUTs out of DaVinci and then use it somewhere else. You can use it on a monitor when you're on set shooting. You can develop custom LUTs, all that stuff. It's really awesome. That's this whole video. DaVinci is awesome. Sorry, Adobe. Well, we're getting to the pros of, of Lumetri, so just hold on. All right, so the 10th pro of DaVinci Resolve is previewing LUTs. It is very, very easy to do inside of DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to my uh, celluloid LUTs. And all you have to do is kind of hover over the LUT preview and it will show up in your monitor over there. And you can actually see what that looks like. And then when you find one that you really like, uh, just for this example, let's go with this one, right click, apply LUT to current node, and then you can just apply the LUT right there and it looks really nice. Uh, here's your raw footage, here's the LUT plus the grade, and it makes it really easy just to kind of preview all of these LUTs and you could also drag and drop them on your footage as well. Whatever you wanna do, there's multiple ways to do things, but I feel like this is a nice workflow. The 11th pro of DaVinci Resolve is having the ability to add multiple of the same adjustment to the same clip. And I know that sounds stupid, but it actually is fairly important depending on how deep you want to dive into color correction. So check this out. I want to add a saturation adjustment to this clip, all right? So I'm going to saturate it. I'm going to add another node. I'm going to saturate it some more. I'm going to add another node, saturate it some more, add another node. And I can just keep going with this. Again, the image is completely breaking and maybe this is a style that I want to go for, but I have added essentially four different saturation adjustments to this one clip and I've done it at like 450% saturation, right? In Premiere, I can literally only go as far as as the basic correction will let me, so to 200% saturation, and then I can be sneaky and come to creative and then also boost the saturation down here. But if I wanted to go any higher than that, I actually have to add a new instance of Lumetri Color to that clip in order to get that much saturation. So I actually have to instance the plugin multiple times, which is really annoying. And that kind of goes back to the other pro of DaVinci Resolve when I said you can kind of have like more range on your adjustments, kind of ties into that. But having the ability to add multiple adjustments of the same type to that clip, huge, huge pro. And the last pro, I'm not even gonna cut to another shot or anything, DaVinci Resolve is free free. You can download it for free right now. There's a link to download it in the video description for free right now. It's free. Lumetri Color, I guess, is also free, but it comes with the price tag of having to have a Premiere license. So technically, if you're going to go based on money, uh, simply for color grading purposes, we're not going to touch the editing capabilities of DaVinci Resolve, just the color grading stuff. DaVinci is free. You can't really beat it. But now is the time that we go into the pros of Lumetri Color after we just kind of pooped all over it. We're gonna, we're gonna redeem it a little bit, check this out. Pro number one of Lumetri Color is the top to bottom workflow is actually really easy to follow. So if you guys are color grading anything and you start here from the top at basic correction and you work your way to the bottom, as long as you are going vertically from top to bottom, it's actually relatively easy to follow. So you start here by doing all of your basic adjustments. You come down here to creative. You can do some vibrant saturation sharpening. You can add some intensity on your LUTs. You can do a little faded film thing. Then you can come down here, adjust your curves. You have hue versus saturation versus hue, versus luminance, versus saturation, all that stuff down here. And then you kind of polish it off with some color wheels and matching and HSL secondary or whatever, and then a vignette if you want to go down that far. But literally following it from top to bottom is a nice workflow where in DaVinci Resolve, you kind of have to jump around everywhere. You're coming over here to logarithmic, back to primary. You have all these little folders up here. All of them do different things. You have all these nodes. It gets a little confusing, but to Lumetri Color's benefit, uh, working top down actually is nice. The second pro of Lumetri Color is that you can work from right inside of Premiere, which saves you a tremendous amount of time. I don't have to export my timeline into DaVinci. I don't have to go and fetch the raw clips and then import them into DaVinci or whatever. I do all of my editing right down here because I firmly believe, and I will believe until the day that I die, that Premiere is a much better editor than DaVinci Resolve, and I have yet to be convinced of that. So if you're gonna go based on that information, having Lumetri Color right inside of Premiere is going to save you a bunch of time because you you don't have to export it. You don't have to deal with XMLs or any of that garbage. It's just all right here and self-contained. So pro for Premiere Pro, pro for Lumetri Color Pro uh, being right inside of Premiere. 
The third pro of Lumetri Color is being able to work non-destructively. If I come over here to this adjustment layer and I want to throw a LUT on that adjustment layer, now I am working in a very non-destructive way where I can come over here and I can do all my adjustments, yada, yada, yada. And then I can move that adjustment layer somewhere else, uh, copy and paste the grade, extend that adjustment layer, and my original raw footage is not being touched. So the ability to work kind of non-destructively is pretty nice. One would argue that the node-based system inside of DaVinci Resolve is also non-destructive, but from the definition of non-destructive, using it on an adjustment layer is. So pro for Lumetri Color, non-destructive workflow, awesome. The fourth pro for Lumetri Color is master channel color effects. I've gone over this a million times, but I'm gonna go over it a million and one times. If I have this clip and I have it duplicated on my timeline a bazillion times, I want to be able to make one adjustment to the color grade and have it affect all of these clips. If you have a long interview and you're cutting it up on your timeline, you have multiple instances of it, the last thing you wanna be doing is copying and pasting color grades every time. So I can come right up here to the master color grade. Look, no, no tricks here. I'm clicking around, everything is ungraded. I'm gonna go back to my first clip, click on master. I'm going to add a LUT and just increase the exposure and the contrast and the saturation a little bit. And now guys, all of those have updated on my timeline every time that clip is instance. And that is uh, indicated by this little red line underneath the effects button. So that is something huge inside of Premiere that again, saves a lot of time when you're color grading. And that is something that doesn't exist in DaVinci Resolve to my knowledge, or if it does, it's not very apparent that you can do that. You can do remote grades and local grades and it's slightly confusing, but this way is very easy to understand. You click on master and then everything on your timeline reflects those changes. So it makes it really easy for you to color grade down the road, and then you don't really fumble with copying and pasting grades on things. The fifth pro for Lumetri Color is having the ability to save LUTs and presets inside of Premiere just by coming up here to Lumetri Color, clicking on these three little lines, and then you can export a dot look, you can export a dot cube, or you can save it as a preset inside of Adobe Premiere for you to call up later. So that's pretty nice. Also the dot cube and the dot look as well. The sixth pro for Lumetri Color is also previewing LUTs. I can come right here to the Creative tab and I can kind of just scroll through my LUTs right here and just preview them all one at a time, which is a nice little easy workflow. And then once you find something that you like, double click on that LUT to apply it to your footage. And then you can adjust the intensity of it. You can make it more or less intense. You can also add some faded film on it. And this is kind of a nice way to preview all of your LUTs. I happen to like this way a little bit better than DaVinci Resolve because it's faster and it's a little bit more fun to kind of click through and see everything. It is a little bit buggier, but uh, as far as workflow is concerned, I kind of like this way better because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just nicer, more fun. The seventh pro for Premiere Pro is keyframing any of your color effects is significantly easier in Lumetri Color than it is in DaVinci Resolve. I can come down here to basic correction and to my exposure, set a keyframe, move over here a little bit, and now set my keyframe really high. And now that exposure will animate over time and it looks really good. The footage is completely breaking, but you animate with Lumetri Color exactly how you animate anything else in Premiere. So it's very intuitive uh, versus DaVinci Resolve. Uh, if I wanted to do something on on just this second node. I have to come down here to corrector two. I have to make sure that all the keyframes are enabled. It's gonna start adding keyframes here in like a really weird way. And if I go like this, then I have to like highlight these keyframes and then like right click on them and then add a dynamic keyframe. It like, it, it's not it's not very intuitive. It makes it actually uh, a lot more difficult to do things, but Lumetri Color uh, inside of Adobe Premiere is exactly what you're used to in that sense. So it is a lot easier. The eighth pro of Lumetri Color is the fact that it does operate as a plugin and not as a standalone piece of software or workflow. I can go and add color to this clip and then I can just delete the plugin off of there if I wanted to. So it's kind of always non-destructive. Where in DaVinci Resolve, it is a little bit destructive because it's built into the program, but no color grade here. And then as soon as I make one adjustment, it adds the plugin to my footage. I can turn the effects on and off to like keep it on there for later. I can set a mask around certain points around the plugin and then it's masking only within Lumetri Color. So if I were to make this uh, like a little bit more extreme, right, uh, you can see that it is just affecting the area inside my mask and I can turn on the plugin and turn off the plugin. So in that sense, it is kind of nice that it functions as a plugin and not as a standalone workflow or piece of software. The ninth pro for Lumetri Color is adding a vignette. Bet you didn't expect that one, but adding a vignette uh, to your footage is actually really, really surprisingly easy to do because there's a whole tab for it and you do have a decent amount of control uh, here. So if you are looking to add a vignette to your scene, uh, which actually is really nice for weddings, if you want to do a white vignette or you want to really focus the viewer's attention on something, 
adding a slight vignette is really nice. And in DaVinci Resolve, it is a little complex and complicated because you have to add a new LUT and then come over here and add like an ellipse and then pull this thing out and then pull this thing out. And then you have to invert it and then you have to like darken the outside of it. It's actually like fairly complicated to do. Um, and in, in Lumetri Color, it's significantly easier to do. So if you wanna add a vignette uh, by that sense, that is a pro for Lumetri Color because vignettes are very easy to add. And the 10th and final pro for Lumetri Color is the comparison view tends to work a lot easier than in DaVinci Resolve. If you come over here to Color Wheels and Match, and then you select Comparison View, it will show you the clip that immediately precedes the clip that you are working on, so you can actually grade and make sure that it looks the same as you're transitioning from shot to shot to shot. Uh, that does happen in DaVinci Resolve, but it's a little bit like clunky and complicated. And I hit this and then it like, is like, insetting it like picture in picture, which is kind of weird. And then I can like expand it to make it bigger and I can't move it over for some weird reason. And then these all buttons are confusing and now it's kind of shifting. And I don't know, it's it's not as easy to understand as it is in Premiere, uh, which is just a very simple, hey, turn on comparison view, turn off comparison view. Um, and so I can see the shot that immediately comes before it. So in that sense, it works a lot better and a lot nicer than in DaVinci Resolve. So pro for Lumetri Color comparison view uh, is pretty awesome. So that's it guys, that's the pros list for both DaVinci Resolve and Lumetri Color when it comes to color grading. And I really did think about the things that I appreciate about both while I'm color grading, because I, like most people, maybe, I don't know, but I color grade in both Lumetri Color and DaVinci Resolve depending on the amount of time that I have. If I'm on a rush deadline and I need to get something out the door quick, I'll almost always grade in Lumetri Color. But if I have a little bit more time, I will grade in DaVinci Resolve because as we transition into the cons, the one biggest con that I have for DaVinci Resolve is the round trip workflow to get something out of Premiere into DaVinci Resolve and then back is very convoluted and very clunky and it makes it almost not worth it. Like I don't wanna spend the time to have to go through that workflow in order to just use DaVinci Resolve. And because I'm not using DaVinci Resolve as my main editing platform, that's kind of, it's always a deal breaker for me when it comes to that. So the biggest con for me at least of DaVinci Resolve is the round trip workflow in and out of Premiere in order to color grade. All right, some other cons for DaVinci Resolve. Keyframing adjustments is not intuitive. I know I talked about it a little bit earlier, but we're gonna talk about it again now because it is a con. You have to add dynamic keyframes and it's based on the nodes and it gets really confusing. It's not as straightforward as you're used to. So when it comes to keyframing adjustments, DaVinci Resolve, not that great at it. I think it could be better, but that is a con in my book. Another con for me is having to learn tremendously more about a program because DaVinci is complicated. It is far more complicated than Lumetri Color, which is probably why it is so much better. But if you're a beginner and you're just starting out and you're jumping into DaVinci, the chances of you getting overwhelmed are very, very high. So if you're looking for something that's easy entry, Lumetri Color is gonna be better in that sense. So DaVinci as a con, there's just way too much to understand. Another con that you might be surprised by was also a pro for DaVinci Resolve, which is the node-based workflow. And it's kind of based on the thing that we just talked about is a node-based workflow is very confusing, especially when you're using like mixer nodes and combiner nodes and layer nodes and all this stuff. It can get really overwhelming and really convoluted and really complicated. So a pro of having node-based workflow also is a con because I think it kind of works in both ways. So I didn't want it to just be a pro without it being a con as well. So you kind of have to pick your poison when it comes to that. And the last two cons that I have written down for DaVinci Resolve is that you can get lost and overwhelmed very, very easily. And also it is not great for beginners because it is such a complex and complicated program. I know it's free, so you're gonna be enticed to download it for free. But then once you jump in and look at everything, you're gonna be like, oh my God, there's way too much here. I don't understand any of this stuff. And you're gonna get overwhelmed and lost and not really want to explore color grading because of that. So not great for beginners, but if you guys are really serious about stepping up your color grade game and you want to learn more about color science and color grading, DaVinci Resolve is an absolutely unbelievable, unbeatable program when it comes to color. And now last but not least, the cons of Lumetri Color. And I'm just gonna list these off with some text on screen because I think at this point, you guys know that I prefer DaVinci Resolve over Lumetri Color, but hey, I'm doing my due diligence. Here's my cons. There's a very limited range on the adjustments that you have. Overall, it's a bit clunky and difficult to get good results in Lumetri Color. HSL secondary kind of sucks. <laughs> if you're gonna do selective color, DaVinci is way better for that. Uh, there's no masking or mask tracking capabilities with Lumetri Color, which is a huge bummer. Uh, you can't reset individual tabs in Lumetri Color, which is very surprising. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve. 
Installing custom LUTs is clunky and pretty difficult when it comes to Lumetri Color, which is very unfortunate. It seems to add a lot more noise to the color with Lumetri Color versus DaVinci Resolve. Lumetri Color is almost too simple and not as intuitive as it should be. Look, I don't know what to tell you, all right? I just report the facts here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. So I gave you a lot of pros of each, and I do firmly believe that it comes down to time. If I'm running out of time, I almost always use Lumetri Color. If I have a lot of time, I almost always use DaVinci Resolve, or if I'm doing a really pro project and I know it's gonna take DaVinci Resolve to make it look amazing, I will use it for that. And I'm assuming that if you guys are watching this video, you might be in the same boat as me. Which one do I use? Which one is better? And the answer is they're both kind of good for their own reasons. So you have have to choose those reasons for yourself, just like I have chosen for myself in order to make that decision for you. But hopefully my little pros and cons list has shed some light on, uh, you know, what you can expect when you dive into each one. And maybe you agree with me. Maybe you don't. If you don't, if you do, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'm genuinely very interested to see what you guys have to say about this comparison. And with that, that will be the end of this tutorial. We've been talking about DaVinci Resolve and Lumetri Color for quite some time now. So I'm gonna call it here. Uh, make sure you guys leave a like on this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already down below. There's a bunch of links and a bunch of fun stuff in the video description for you guys to connect with me on social media, support you, support me, support this channel. Happy holidays. Am I forgetting anything? Comment in the comment section below. I want to talk to you guys about nerdy color grade stuff. But that about does it today for me, guys. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I can't believe this channel got as big as it did. I'm reflecting in the holiday time. And it's just absolutely amazing that I have a community like you guys to share all of my nerdy post-production stuff with. It's exciting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.